is Greg Stone from the American College of Cardiology Annual Scientific Sessions, where I just presented the ultimate DAPT, D-A-P-T, trial as a late-breaking trial. And as you know, there have been many, many studies that have looked at uh, or tried to determine what the optimal duration is of dual antiplatelet therapy after percutaneous coronary intervention. In patients with acute coronary syndromes, we know there's a high rate of stent thrombosis and myocardial infarction uh, after PCI in ACS, either unstable angina or myocardial infarction, whether arising from the stented lesion itself or other lesions in the coronary tree because of plaque rupture and thrombosis. So because of this, most studies have used one year of dual antiplatelet therapy after PCI in ACS. And that's what both the United States and European guidelines recommend for most patients. But in the last five to seven years or so, there's been increasing interest uh, in trying to shorten that period of dual antiplatelet therapy because of the recognition of relatively high rates of bleeding, which can contribute to worsened outcomes, including death, uh, when that occurs. And in particular, without reviewing all of these studies, uh, the evidence has really pointed to the fact that aspirin may not be necessary for long-term use and may, and may be causing more harm than good. So there have been a series of studies where dual antiplatelet therapy was shortened first from 12 months to six months, then six months to three months, then three months to even one month, uh, as long as the drug that was being used was a potent P2Y12 inhibitor. However, none of the trials, particularly those that have looked at one month duration of DAPT have been placebo controlled. So they've been prone to bias. So we therefore designed the ultimate DAP trial in which we took 3,400 patients who presented with either unstable angina or recent non-STEMI or STEMI who underwent PCI with contemporary drug eluting stents and then were treated with aspirin and ticagrelor for one month, ticagrelor, a potent uh, P2Y12 inhibitor. And patients who were doing well at one month without a major bleeding event, a major ischemic event, not, no side effects or contraindications to dual antiplatelet therapy, were then randomized one-to-one. -one. Uh, all patients continued the ticagrelor. Half the patients received a study drug aspirin, and half the patients received a matching placebo. And we followed the patients for an additional 11 months. So we looked at the outcomes between 1 and 12 months after PCI on either ticagrelor alone or ticagrelor plus aspirin. And we had a primary effectiveness endpoint to see if we could reduce bleeding with that strategy. And more importantly, we have a primary effect, a safety endpoint to see if there would be no cost to pay, if there'd be no increase in major adverse cardiovascular or cerebrovascular events. And what we found was that indeed we did decrease bleeding by more than 50%, from 4.6% to 2.1%. And it was not just minor bleeding, it was minor and major bleeding, and particularly major bleeding itself on a variety of different scales was reduced by approximately 60%. And that's a major, major reduction. In fact, even fatal bleeds, there was four fatal bleeds in the ticagrelor plus aspirin group and only one fatal bleed in the ticagrelor alone group. So was it safe? Well, in the ticagrelor plus aspirin group, there was a 3.7% incidence of major adverse cardiac, cardiovascular or cerebrovascular events between one and 12 months, and a 3.6% rate on patients treated with ticagrelor alone. So it was extremely safe, and the confidence interval around that hazard ratio of approximately 1.0 was extremely tight. Um, so we could say with confidence now, from this double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial in patients with hot acute coronary syndromes who were treated with contemporary drug-eluting stents, that if they tolerate a potent P2Y12 inhibitor, in particular, ticagrelor with aspirin for one month and are doing well, then at one month, we can safely discontinue the aspirin and patients will thusly have more than a 50% reduction in the bleeds that could come from the aspirin and would have no price to pay in terms of worsening ischemic events such as myocardial infarction or stent thrombosis. So hopefully this will impact uh, clinical practice around the world and change practice guidelines.